G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to bring to you this Leopold, um, it's the Leopold 5HD tactical rifle scope, 5x25, um, and it's sitting on top of this stealth, um, this Savage stealth rifle, um, and it's uh, in 6.5 Creedmoor. It's actually a rifle we've got across to do a video and review on, and we're halfway through sort of building that. And it came to a setup like it is. I didn't do any of the setting up, it's, um, but set up like it is to do the test and do some shooting with it. Um, the scope is, and I suppose I'll touch base a little bit with that. I'm not going to get too much into the details. I'll put some stuff on the screen. I'm not going to tell you what you can look up and work out for yourself. Um, it is all the, the bits and pieces of a full tactical rifle scope. So it actually has a, a cover on here, but in under there it has a proper um, turrets. It is quite smart the way it's set up. It's a little bit lighter than probably the the, the counterparts it's um, it's marketing with in a way of a five by 25 with a 56 mil objective rifle scope. It's a little lighter than, than average. It's also, I think, cost wise, and I, I don't get in too much into the details of it, in the unluminated, in the not luminated form, not un, but the not luminated form, I think it's, it punches a little bit above its weight. In fact, it's a little bit, a little bit better value, value for money. Um, once you go with illuminated, I think it's about on par. But listen, that changed all over the world, and I'm not going to try and get into that. Um, I suppose what I would touch on with it, um, for me, Leopold is something that when I grew up, they were sort of the, the, the flash scope to have in a hunting scope, in a hunting rifle. They were the good ones to have. Um, probably when I really got back into it in 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I started to look at tactical scopes and that side of things, um, Leopold were, uh, I don't want to pick on Leopold, but um, they weren't in the race as far as I was considered. Uh, to me, they were overrated scopes. They weren't up with uh, the modern features. They, were, they weren't a high enough quality scope. Um, that's 10 years ago, um, and I don't know when things changed. I wasn't paying attention, but what they've done here is right back up there. It's, it is now a really comparable, a something to consider in the way of a tactical rifle scope. Um, certainly glass quality I found is right up there, um, and I'm not gonna get into what coats, what coating they've got onto them, where their glass comes, comes from, that sort of stuff. I'm not a glass connoisseur on that side of things. To me, I want good clear glass, I want a good picture. I'm not that fussed on the color or, or, the, or the, all the different terms you can get into. But I found this is good, and I found it worked well in low light situations as well, but I found it really nice and clear. Um, 5x25 is a really nice, happy sort of zone. I think they do one up from this, so I think there's a, um, an 8x30, or a, I'm not sure about that, I haven't looked at those details, but I know there is a, a higher power unit. Um, they are a little bit um, finicky, they've gone with 35 mil tube, which means there's a nice big tube for good light transmission, and that sort of stuff. Means you, it's a little more awkward, there's less choice in the way of rings, that side of things is one of the things that'll make them a little challenged, but there are some good ones, and these are it's the, their own rings, but there are some decent ones in the 35 mil. Um, they've got a nice feature, they've, they've, they've got a knob on here, I think that's removable, but a knob on here for your power adjustment, nice and easy to access and use on that side of it. Um, they have, it is, this is the illuminated model and it's quite nice in the way that it works, nice and bright for your day, daylight stuff and with, I think there's seven different settings on there. Um, so lots of different settings in the way of how you can use that side of things and nice, I'll put some image on so you can see that, that it's, it's quite nice. It is first focal plane, so as folks would know me, for my, for my ELR stuff, I'm much more a um, second focal plane guy, I much prefer that. But it is for most people in the tactical sense, in your PRS and that side of things, it, it, it is the first focal plane, so it means you can range all the way through it. Works really nice on that score. A nice power adjustment. Everything feels nice and tactile and works well. A um, couple of features which are probably different to this scope, which I think are a decent idea. They have positioned quite neatly. It's been worked out by a rifleman to where you can actually see your zero point quite neat and tidy without having to go around right to the side. They've set it up so you can actually see it from on top of the scope very easily so you're not having to look around the side to see your exact dial on that side of things. Um, and another interesting feature they got on the top here, it's a locking turret, so it, it locks at zero. You have to press this little button on the side here to unlock it, let it rotate. 
but then you'll notice that as you rotate it, it's also your indicator. So it's out for your first turn. Once you go to your second turn, and the turret has the indications where you can actually see three different levels on there. Um, I should say this is just under 34 mil of adjustment, which is the 120, so it's right up in the in the large adjustment level. So in punching the similar weight to the to the scopes that have good adjustment, so it has that for ELR stuff. But as you rotate, when you go to your second term, that button that was sitting out becomes flush, becomes level. So it's actually goes to level, you rotate again, and on your third rotation, so when you're getting up into the bigger stuff, you'll notice that that button disappears, and at the same time, this silver button on top sits right at the top. So it has a nice indicator. You can look and see where, whether that's sitting up or inside, or it's flush, or it's out. That tells you where you are, whether you're on the first rotation, second rotation, or third rotation, and then you have the three different sets of numbers. So it means you can, at a glance, be able to see exactly which rotation you're on and where you're at. So there's not so much of the winding back down to zero and then winding back up to find where you're at. It actually can tell you where you are and the look of it. So that's nice and smart and, and probably one of the better systems I've seen on that side of things. Um, Parallax, it's got numbers on the side. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of the numbers on the side. I don't, well, it might give you an idea of where you're dialing to. I much prefer to focus, do your parallax properly. So you move your head around behind here and you adjust your parallax to where you are moving your eye around and you're not finding the reticle moving around. So um, this is something obviously it works for knowing roughly you're at 600 yards so you can dial to that point. Just don't trust that 600. Go and make sure when you're using it that you adjust with your eye to make sure that reticle's staying still. Um, nice and easy to use, nice access to it. Um, a main thing, I put some images on with the glass quality. That was probably the bit that um, was a nice surprise. Um, it really was up there. The glass is working really nicely. And like I said, in the light transmission side of things, I'm not like a great, uh, go into a great detail on that sort of stuff. We'll do a lot of testing with it. But what I found with it really nice. It is fo first focal plane. And for me, the negative and the reason, the main reason I don't like a first focal plane is that when you go up in your power is how fat your reticle gets. They're sort of getting around that a little bit. Um, well, I should explain that a little bit more. In, in, I have some other scopes the, that we've used where the reticles, they have it nice and fine, so up in high power, it's not in your face. The negative with that is when you go right down to low power, you can barely see your reticle, very hard to use. These guys have gone the opposite way. They've gone so it's still a decent reticle when you're right down in your power, but it means it is quite fat when you get up in your power. What they have done to largely get around that is they have a very fine center striation, the center dot um, is nice and small. I haven't got the numbers or the, the measurement on that, but I actually found it was quite nice and small. So you could really, with a little space between your reticle with the center dot in it, quite, quite small and still quite functional at the high power side of things. Um, there is a range of reticles. I'll put them um, uh, so you can see what that is. I won't go through the details, but they have some, essentially you have the horror style um, where you have the, the, the ladders and be able to work out your wind holes and that sort of stuff. They have, I think they have three or four different options to go with that. So the guys who like that sort of stuff, who are using more of that sort of thing, um, trained into that sort of stuff, then they do a good job in that side of things as well. So essentially what I'm saying is this, this Mark V of the Leopold, to me, what I'm looking at is a real step up. Um, they really are um, playing with the big boys with what they've done. Um, and I was, it's um, something that I was quite impressed with. So it becomes a real thing to compare with. And for the people who've loved Leopolds all the time, I apologize, um, I'll just say it as I see it. Um, I was, you know, when I first, like I said, got back into it, I wasn't a fan. They were just not doing it for me. Uh, but this has really brought it back into where it is something to really consider. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let us know any thoughts you got to go with them, what your experiences are, that side of things. Um, for us, I've liked using this scope. It, like I said, it's a, it's a real contender. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing some more, checking them out and shooting with them. Anyway, thanks for checking in on us. We'll catch you next time. Hi guys, Sam here. For folks that are interested in our products that you will have seen in our videos, 
These are all products that Mark has designed through our experience in ELR shooting. We manufacture them here ourselves. The likes of our adjustable bag bases, bag riders, bipod systems, muzzle brakes, shot data recording sets, and even our great fun little 22 long rifle target. These are all available in our web store, the links to which are below this video, along with our contact information. And guys, we work hard at putting these videos together, so we appreciate all the help we can get. For those of you who haven't subscribed, don't forget and hit the bell so you get notifications of when our videos come out. It would be awesome to get some financial support. So for those of you who can, you can purchase support bits on our web store which help us bring these videos to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.